If you're old enough to remember this noise, then you're probably feeling that nostalgia right now, right? You probably, though, had no idea what was actually happening here. I mean, all I cared about was the sound that came after. You've got mail. Or maybe this one. I am getting tingles just listening to this sound again and again, but I have questions. Welcome to Una Dose of Trace. This week, modem sounds. These sounds actually do have meaning. I'm sure you knew that. It's computer speak or modem speak, really. Modem is actually a compound word for modulator demodulator, modem. The idea is it uses wires to send signals between two computers, be that a government computer to another government computer, a researcher to a central computer or supercomputer, or your little PC in your house to AOL, a BBS, a Usenet, or Facebook, or wherever. Even the mighty cell phone, the pinnacle of modern computing in your pocket, has a modem in it. For governments and research institutions, the original elite hackers, the set line was dedicated completely to the modem, sort of like a telegraph line. It connected the two things together and that was it. That was in the early 20th century. Modems are way older than you think. But then during World War II, the Air Force needed to transmit radar data securely. So they turned to the network of phone lines that were already everywhere. Phone lines were designed for people though, not machines. When we speak over a phone line, that data, that's not very dense. We can speak about 140 to 180 words per minute. We can understand closer to 400 or more. Now, if you convert that to bits, it's pretty low. But over the phone, there's static and there's noise and it doesn't ever sound very good, right? Not to mention every phone call runs through physical lines that are sometimes more degraded or they're of higher quality or lower quality, depending on where it is that you're calling from and to and what kind of phone you're using. All of that can affect the call and it might not be noticeable to us humans but it is the computers. Modems use phone lines differently. For example, people, people you and I, can't, and I talk, can't talk at the same, same time, time. Use, but modems can. Modem. And yet, people can hear the patterns of speech even through quite a lot of static or noise, whereas modems might have more trouble. So all these weird sounds that your modem was making is a way to make sure the modems know what's gonna be said, how to communicate, who's communicating, and how they can do it back and forth over this connection. Luckily for us, Una Rossinen and Alex Madrigal broke this down for us. You can find links to their stories down in the description. So let's say the blue person is the caller and the red person is the receiver. This is what the modems were saying. Hello, this is a friendly modem. Who are you? Hi, this is a friendly blue modem. Can we use information transfer? Please turn off echo. Also, I'm in the United States. Looks like we can both transmit this basic data. Yeah, we can. Okay, turn off echo and other things. Here's my resume. This is a landline, by the way. Our resume is very similar. I can do some of this stuff as well and on digital instead of analog. I'm on a landline. Here are my carrier signals and power levels. Same Z's. Let's test, test the line. This line. Great, looks like we can use a pretty good speed. Try and keep your signal strong. Woo, you got it. So at that point, the modems have introduced themselves. They found out what speeds they can communicate at and they're ready to transmit their data. All of this is called a handshake. This handshake might trigger some nostalgia for you, but did you notice that it might not be the same as your handshake from when you were a kid? Depending on the modem, the data speed, the line, they're gonna be a little different, but they are very similar. Over the years, clever engineers created echo cancellation, phase shifting, and other ways to send more data through voice lines. But ultimately, the reason you heard all that static and beeps and boops is because they had to translate those sounds into whatever weird thing you were doing on GeoCities that night. Once we stopped sharing phone lines with actual humans, these noises weren't necessary anymore. Your cell phone modem doesn't behave this way. It does handshake with every cell tower and Wi-Fi device that you come near, but the protocols are based on digital signals, not on audible sounds. I personally had a fun bout of nostalgia reading Alex Madrigal's piece, but you know me, I couldn't just leave it there, right? That's not why you watch this show. So I looked up the Wi-Fi handshake too, and it goes something like this. Hello, welcome to Starbucks. I am the Wi-Fi. Here's a resume, key, MAC address, drivers, and chipset. Okay, hello. I am also a computer. Here's my key and also the password to access you and the MAC address and also my chipsets, all of my resume and all of my codes. Okay, hold up. <gasps> Calculating. Cool, here's your session key. Have fun, don't do anything that I wouldn't do on this Wi-Fi. Thanks. Obviously this is oversimplifying and a little silly, but these protocols are built to make sure that computers can talk with each other consistently and carefully. To be honest, when computers were first constructed, they weren't designed to talk to each other. At the basic chip and board level, every computer is different. Even your iPhone, which might look the same on the outside, can have different chips running the stuff on the inside. 
Not to mention the phone lines, the amount of interference, radiation, even microsurges in power can all affect communication between you and your chat rooms or Googles or whatever. Files done. It's an incredible feat of engineering that we can even get these binary hotboxes to converse at all. One last thing, special thanks to nerd famer Keegan Goertz who answered my Twitter call for help on this topic. Keegan, you're a Stara. Thanks. Remember that friend that you used to talk to on AIM? Send this video to them. Unless you talk to I Like Chicken 3, because that was me, so I, I already know this video exists. In case you've forgotten, I quit my job to do this. This is my full-time thing, and I don't get paid. As we grow the channel, I'm going to be able to go out and talk to real scientists and bring them here to talk to you. It's going to be amazing. I would love it if you could be part of building it. So, subscribe. Share this video with your friends. There are so many different ways that you can help. Subscribing, sharing, liking, joining the NerdFam Patreon. And all of them will make my heart get a little bit bigger. Not like a medical problem kind of way, more like a Grinchy kind of way. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And as always, more research Goodbye. is needed. Bye.